Do you really like science? But you hate the fact that it takes forever to get a PhD. This is Dr. Nancy. I was in your shoes years ago. I got my PhD in three and a half years with 14 publications and one patent. Now, I manage a team of product managers in a Fortune 20 technology company. Today, I'm gonna to share with you how I got my PhD in three and a half years. On average, in the US, it takes about five years to get a PhD. In special majors such as biology, it takes about like seven years to get a PhD. And people also ask me in the past, Nancy, how did you cut the time in half but still being able to publish 14 papers? Today, I'm going to share with you the five things I did very differently from most of the PhD students. Hopefully, it's going to inspire you to take some actions today. First of all, I proactively take control of my destiny. What it means that I never let others to put label on me. I don't let other people to tell me what to do. I make the decision and I do not take no for an answer. Let me give you an example, which is also my own life-defining moment. The earlier in my PhD program, I remember I was in the lab doing experiment. My PhD advisor went down to the lab and said, Nancy, I don't think you have the intelligence to get a PhD. After she said that, she just left, walked out of the room and disappeared. At the time, I was pretty shocked and surprised. All kinds of emotions going into my head. So I went upstairs and stopped her in front of her and said, Dr. B, it is my decision to quit the PhD or stay, not yours. I do not want you to tell me what to do. So I am going to prove to myself whether I can do a PhD or not. So I'd like to have another half a year. Let's make a plan to figure out what's the best way for me to prove to myself I can do a PhD or not. Honestly, at the time, back in my mind, is that I didn't feel like I was qualified either. I didn't have the confidence that I can even get a PhD. I came from a fashion design school. I was a button on my class, guys. And I made a video about how I transitioned from fashion design to engineering and why I decided to do that. You can see the video here. Given that I came from fashion design school, I was way below my class. Everybody's level was here as a PhD student. I was here. I have lots of things to catch up with them. Of course, I didn't feel like I can get a PhD. And for example, in the class called thermodynamics, most other PhD students took the class three times. They did it in the undergrad, they did it in the master program, now it's the third time taking the same class with me. With me coming from the fashion design background, I have no experience my first time. Now I need to compete with these guys who already took the same class three times. That's ridiculous. Of course, I was in the bottom of the class. Of course, my PhD advisor saw me while she was struggling and she decided to help me to save some time in my life, just quit the PhD and do something else because probably take me 10 years to get a PhD. I didn't think my science like knowledge was better than others. I wanted to just prove to myself what I can accomplish. So I made a decision to prove her she was wrong. And eventually I became one of the youngest engineering PhD in the program history. And number two is I trying to make other people like me, especially professors. This sounds very simple, but let me define what it mean by making people like you. That is to improve yourself and provide the unique values to other people so that people see the spark in you, people see the potential in you, and they decide to like you and help you. Let me give you an example. You know, all the PhD students, they need to pass a prospective uh, exam. And usually, less than 50% of the student can pass it. There was a professor in this like uh, committee panel. There are five professors in this panel. One of the professor I took his class, he made assignment for all the PhD students to run simulation of atoms of polymers. Guys, Simulation of atoms inside of polymers, I had no experience. It's extremely difficult. But what I decided was that when all other PhD students want to drill down into one way to run the simulation, I used two different methodologies to solve the same problem. My model wasn't as deep as everybody else. However, my model was able to prove that 
this methodology was right and the other methodology was also right because they achieved the same outcome. And the professor was very impressed. He told all the students in the class and said that Nancy was the only person who was able to use two different ways to solve this problem. Afterwards, when he pulled me on the side and told me that, I really like you. I was quite surprised that you were able to solve problems in two different ways, given you came from a fashion design background. So I'm going to help you and speak for you during your perspective exam. Another piece of information is that the decisions were made when you're not in the room. What I mean is that in those PhD perspective exams, there are a panel of five professors, and those professors will see your exam result and do live tests of you, you answer questions, then you walk out the room, and they collectively make decision of whether you can pass or not. So it happens to be that the professor who really likes me is part of the panel. And he was able to vouch for me, sponsor me among all the professors. And of course, I also did my best in completing those exams. But with him, like influencing other professors, told them how brilliant I was solving problems in two different ways in his class, it helped out. So eventually I was able to pass the prospective exam with one shot. Most of the students did two shots. Number three is the art of collaboration. Let's emphasize on the art because everybody knows we need to collaborate. But how can you make other people collab with you is the very important influencing skills. And specifically, when I collaborate with other people, I understand who is better than me in many different aspects, what I can learn from other people. Learning is my superpower. I learn way faster than most people. But after I understand who is better in certain ways, I will try to improve myself in other ways. So I provide certain things, and he brings in certain values. We together collaborate. And those kind of collaboration really accelerate my PhD research process. I had made several videos about how to influence and you can find multiple videos like this right here. Number four, what I did differently from most of the PhD students is to proactively improve my writing and the presentation skills. I spend the time and money in investing in those key skill sets. Hey guys, I do not think that my science knowledge is better than any of my classmates. But what I believe is that how you present your outcome is very critical. So therefore, I spend the time and money taking public speaking classes, doing writing classes, doing different kind of group training, small group training, different coaches. I did everything I can to improve those key skill sets, which also carries really long way when I start to work for other companies. Number five is the art of negotiation. So negotiation is a key fundamental skill set. I believe everybody needs to take a negotiation class in their life. Do you know that all the engineers and the PhD students and scientists never take those kind of negotiation classes? But negotiation class is a fundamental class part of the, all the business students, all the MBA students take negotiation class. So all the engineers was already set behind because they never take those kind of basic fundamental skill set training. But to me, because I really specialize in personal improvement, I always want to learn new skills. I learned that being able to negotiate is able to carry me really long way. So I invest in this new skill set. What I did was, uh, for example, I was able to negotiate a summer internship with my professor. So she gave me three months to do an internship, and usually lots of PhD students do not get it until they graduate. I did it the first year within my PhD. I also negotiate when I graduate. As you know, I graduated in three and a half years and became one of the youngest engineering PhD in the program history. It all comes from the fundamental skill set, being able to influence others and then negotiate. It's not about negotiating money, it's more about how can you work together and get a deal. Now you might graduate from your PhD program. If you want to learn how to negotiate a job offer, you can check out video right here. You also want to learn the three reasons people fail in negotiation, you can check out this video as well. After watching this video, are you ready to set the right target and try to accelerate your PhD program? I hope you are. If you want to accelerate the process of achieving your goals, you can consider watching this video about how to achieve your goal faster and join my accountability partner group and we can all help each other 
to achieve the goals faster. All right, this is Dr. Nancy, and make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel, and so that in the future when I make more videos like this, you're able to be the first person. Check it out. Good luck with your PhD program or whatever goal you're trying to achieve. This is Dr. Nancy Lee. Follow me on Instagram and YouTube. See you guys.